With the large number of videos on this channel, it can be difficult for me to tell how many times a viewer or viewers have asked a specific question, especially with it being spread across many different videos. I do my absolute best to notice patterns, and one question I know I have been asked many times over and over again for quite some time now is how to set a 3D printer's X and Y offset. This question is often found in extruder or hot end upgrade videos or where something has been modded, but it's also sort of been spread out just across random videos as well. In today's video, we'll take a look at a couple of scenarios that have caused a shift in the X and Y axis as well as how to correct this. There are quite a few ways that you can actually correct or apply an XY axis offset and I'm going to show you the methods that I use and the ones that I think are the easiest to implement. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Huge thank you to MicroSwiss for sponsoring today's video. MicroSwiss manufactures hot ends, extruders, and nozzles for over 30 different 3D printer models and is constantly expanding. I've been running their upgrades on a wide range of Creality printers for over a year now, and I've printed everything from standard PLA to carbon fiber nylon with them. I love that they're a US-based company and that all their products are machined in-house. This helps them to maintain the extremely high level of quality that their customers have grown to expect. Another huge perk is that their upgrades are made for specific machines, making them drop-in replacements in most instances. This helps to expedite the upgrade process and allows you to get up and running again very quickly. Links will be in the description to find out more about the various upgrades they offer or to pick up your own. For a bit of context and before we dive in, I think it's important to take a look at a 3D printer's homing process and the reason that a 3D printer homes before printing. In most cases, before each print, a 3D printer will home itself to a set location. This is typically done by using some form of an end stop while other printers like the Prusa MK3S Plus use a special motor driver that can sense a lost step or stall which lets the printer know it's hit its homing position. This process is needed because stepper motors are open loop and if it wasn't for that homing process, they would not know their current position. Most 3D printers home in the X and Y minimum location, which is typically the front left, and unless otherwise defined, it is the 00, zero location or origin. This is not always the case as some machines, especially ones that have a Z probe, will home the X, home the Y, and then go to the middle of the bed before homing the Z, and there are some printers that will home to the X and Y max, but just to cover the most 3D printers possible, the most common and typical location is the X and Y min, or minimum location. Once homed, the machine knows its location as well as its max travel distance for each axis, which is typically defined in the firmware and slicer to keep your printer from being able to run off the bed or crash into the side. Now that we've touched on homing, we can move on to XY offsets. XY offsets are typically used and needed when a 3D printer does not home to that 00, zero or origin location. It's our way of telling the printer that, hey, although we've homed, we're not at zero, zero, we're actually at negative eight in the X direction and negative five in the Y direction, just using some random numeric examples. This is really important for things like preventing purge lines from printing off the side of the bed and maximizing the full build volume of your 3D printer. This is not something you will typically have to play with on a completely stock printer. The 3D printer's firmware, as well as the included slicer profile from the manufacturer, in theory, should contain the correct data for your printer. This is also why the question comes up most common on videos where we are converting something with the X carriage or applying a different hot end, installing a different hot end that's physically moving the location that the nozzle's at or a different X carriage that's hitting the end stop in a slightly different location than where the stock carriage was hitting that X or Y end stop. Depending on the extent of the hardware change or the incorrectness of the offset, you might not actually notice it for quite some time. There are definitely a few 3D printers in here that I've modified and I have not applied an XY offset to, and it's not very evident to me when I'm printing just a small part, but when you try to fill up the entire build plate or print something large, it becomes much more evident that your print is not centered and that you don't have the correct X and Y offset applied. Next, let's take a look at a few scenarios as well as how to apply an XY offset for those things or fix the need for an offset altogether. Again, I'm going to show you a couple methods. There are quite a few ways and some of them are firmware specific. So I'm going to try to show the ones that cover the most possible machines out there. The first method, which may not be possible on all 3D printers is a physical correction. Depending on the printer and the way that the end stops are mounted, if you have some sort of an offset on those printers, you may be able to just physically scoot the end stop and either direction to compensate for that slight X or Y offset. 
For example, with the Voron 0.1, when I first built it and started printing with it, it did not home to the corner exactly. The X axis was actually a little bit out onto the bed. And the way they have it designed, there is a single M3 screw that you can tighten to make it go a little bit further in the X homing direction when it homes, or you can loosen it to make it where it doesn't go quite as far. So just by adjusting that M3 screw a couple of turns, I was able to get the X offset perfectly corrected. On other machines, the end stop may be mounted to a simple bracket that's on some aluminum extrusions, just using T-nuts. And in those instances, you could also loosen those T-nuts and slide the end stop a couple of millimeters if you need to correct any sort of X or Y offset. If physical adjusting is not possible, we can apply an X and Y offset in our slicer. Jumping over to Cura, this is really easy to apply. Going under Manage Printers, select the printer that you want to apply an offset to, and then choose Machine Settings. Clicking on the Extruder tab, we will see a box labeled Nozzle Offset X and Nozzle Offset Y. This is where we can apply the values for an XY offset. There's really going to be two scenarios for an X and Y offset. And the first is that the nozzle, when it homes, goes beyond the edge of the bed in the X and or Y axis direction. If that's the case, that means it is going to be a negative offset and you can figure out the negative offset and apply those into that box within Cura. I'm also going to show another method in just a moment here that is agnostic as far as slicers go, so you can use it for any and all slicers. The other scenario is what I experienced with the new Micro Swiss NG extruder, which is that when the hot end homes, the nozzle actually protrudes onto the bed a couple of millimeters in both the X and Y axis. In that case, it's not a negative offset. We're actually going to change our max build volume to remove those couple of millimeters that we are losing with the nozzle homing on top of the bed. So how do we calculate the X and Y offset? Well, there's a couple of different ways you can do that. One way that I think is probably the easiest is just to home the printer and grab either a set of digital calipers or a small metric ruler and measure the distance from the tip of your nozzle to the bed in both the X and Y direction. I would say that's the easiest method and definitely the one I prefer. Alternatively though, you can grab something like a cube model and make it so it's just 0.2 millimeters tall or one layer tall, get rid of all infill, get rid of top and bottom layers and have it do just a few perimeters. And then you can measure the distance from each side of that cube to the edge of the bed. Based on those values, you can easily tell what your offset is. So the cube will need to be centered. And when you print it, let's say from one side of the X axis edge of the cube, it's a 10 millimeter gap to the edge of the bed. The other side is an eight millimeter gap. Well, we know that we need to apply a negative one offset to the X. So that way, when we reprint that same cube, we would have a nine millimeter distance from both the left and right side. And the same applies to the front and back of the cube for the Y axis. In the case of the Ender 3 V2 that I mentioned where the nozzle actually protrudes into the bed, it is three millimeters in the X axis. And I measured roughly eight millimeters in the Y axis. In my case, since it is in the bed area and it's a positive value, I'll adjust the new max bed size for these values. For the X, I'll subtract the three millimeters from 235 millimeters to give me a new max X value of 232 millimeters. And for the Y, subtracting the eight millimeters, I will be at 227 millimeters for the max Y axis build volume. In the case that the nozzle was off the bed, it would be the distance in X and Y from the nozzle to where the bed starts. And we would set it as a negative value. You. For example, in the case of the original Micro Swiss direct drive extruder on an Ender 3, the values were roughly negative five for the X and negative 10 for the Y. Different slicers may have different places that you can set these offset values, but there is another way to set the offsets using G code that is slicer agnostic. The G code command G92 allows us to set the current position for any of the axes, and we can apply that to the starting G code. So that way, every time the machine homes to zero zero, after it's honed, we run the G92 command, which will then apply those offsets. Using Prusa Slicer as an example, if I head over to the printer settings for the stock Ender 3 profile and click on custom G code, we will see a text box for the starting G code. We can place this G92 command here. It's important to note the location you place it in the starting G code. It must be placed after the G28 homing command. The G28 command will home your 3D printer's axes and set their location to zero. So if we put the G92 before the G28, once it homes, it will actually overwrite our offsets, resetting them to zero. So it's very important that you place the G92 after the G28 command. Hitting enter to create a new line after G28, we will type G92 and our negative offsets. Based on the example for the Micro Swiss Direct Drive on the Ender 3, that is G92 space X negative 5.0 space Y negative 10.0. Now, when a print is going to start, 
The printer will home to what it believes is 00, zero and the G92 command will apply these offsets to give it its actual homing location. So your prints will be centered and you can use your full build plate. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you now have a much better understanding of how to apply X and Y offsets. Like I said, it's something that's been asked many, many times and there are quite a few different ways of doing it, but I find that if you can just do a physical adjustment, it's by far the easiest. And then the second set, which is just measuring the distance from the nozzle to the bed is the one I'd recommend. It's fairly simple. You're either going to apply a negative offset using Cura's text box, the starting G code, or if it's a positive offset, then you're just going to change the max bill volume of your 3D printer. For printers running Marlin, there is an M206 command that you can also look into if you want that works similar to the G92, except that it doesn't need to be in the starting G code because you can actually save the offset to EEPROM. So that could also be something to look into, but again, wanting to sort of cover all machines and just use generic G code, the G92 command works great. And once you place it in your starting G code, you don't really ever have to think about it again. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Dana from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.